Warning, this video is a critique review. That means there will be negative thoughts on this game. To the developers of Bendy and Ink Machine, please take what is about to be said with a grain of salt. What is about to be viewed is done in a fun and jokeful manner. What I'm about to say is my opinion and should not affect how you should feel about this game. Thank you for watching. Oh, well, I'll be damned. You guys are back. Last time I saw a lot of you, I was watching the trailer of the Dark Revival. So, what have I been doing while I've been gone? Well... Get a life! Get a life! Or, shit! What the f what? Creeper! Go <laughs> sleep with me! I have no choice! Uh, do you <laughs> treat me? <laughs> I need to have an image in my head. Yeah, that is quite a montage. Quite a montage. Well, I suppose it's time to unveil what I've been cooking for the past several months. So, without further ado. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the TZK universe. My name is TZKU, and welcome to what I've been cooking for the past uh, three to four months. Uh, I started this project back in late June, early July, uh, and I've been hyping it up all over social media. I've been hyping it up on Twitter. I've been hyping it up on YouTube. Uh, people have gotten a glimpse of what it's going to be about. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the review video. Now, what on earth am I gonna be reviewing in today's video? Well. I'm going to be reviewing what people know me the most for. Spyro the Dragon. No, it is not Spyro the Dragon. It is going to be Bendy and the Ink Machine. You know, the game that a lot of people like. You know, I'm looking at my attire right now. I'm looking at my hat and things just don't feel right. I feel like I need to be dressed for the occasion. So you know what? I'll be right back. I feel like this is the last time I'm gonna wear this hat ever. In today's review, I'm going to be playing on the Xbox One edition of the game. I know there's the PS4 version and the Switch version and each version is kind of like graphically different from what I know or from heard. However, since I can't be asked to buy a PlayStation 4 and a Switch, I'm just gonna say the Xbox One edition will do. So basically you're gonna be getting a review of the game and the console port. That's basically a two for the price of one. Now, what's the price I'm asking for from you guys? You know, because two for one, what's the price? I just want you guys to watch the video, uh, give it a like if you like it, um, and you know what? Just, just just enjoy, you know? do do Just do, you watch the video, I do the entertainment. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time we get this video started now what we got to do is we got to get the game in the console and uh it's 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 ww2k17 i i don't know why i tried lying to you i i've already i've already recorded everything everything's done i don't even know why i'm trying to fool you right now enjoy the video Bending the Ink Machine is a five chapter series being released one chapter at a time starting back as a small demo on Game Jolt. This brought to us the beta version of Bender, well it's now known as the Alpha. This game was uploaded to Game Jolt on February 10th, 2017. The game gained traction quickly and a community was created. Chapter 2 was released on April 18th, 2017. A slightly, but not by much, longer chapter was introduced, giving us a new character to the game and enemies to fight. It also gave us the first real chase in the game from Bendy. Chapter 3 was released on September 28th, 2017. This chapter is longer than both 1 and 2 combined and introduces another new character and started to really get into the story on what was going on within the studio, featuring a corrupted version of Alice Angel. Chapter 4 was slated to release on April 28th, 2018, but due to the no weekend postings for games on Steam, it was moved to April 30th, 2018. Along with Chapter 4, Chapters 1 through 3 were remastered, one getting a huge revamp with introducing a brand new ink machine, two getting an added room to the game including missions down there, 
and Chapter 3 didn't receive that much of a remaster. A room that was originally in the Chapter 3 trailer, but never accessed originally in the chapter, was added and had a broken miracle station with the text, Feel Familiar. Chapter 4's release felt really incomplete with a bug that made the last boss fight phase incredibly easy. Whenever he throws them, they just break in his hand. Aye. Oh, wait, what? What are you doing with those, uh, those there things, huh? See, the implication is that you, yeah, <laughs> I think the boss might be a bit bugged. It was confirmed at E3 that Chapter 5 was already done upon Chapter 4's release. It was also announced that there would be a console ports on Mike Mood's Twitter. Unfortunately, I cannot play the clip because Mike Mood has deactivated his Twitter account for reasons. Basically, what they said is they were working on Chapter 4 and 5 at the same time. Was that a good idea? Let's find out. Chapter 5 came out on October 26, 2018. The Xbox and PS4 ports were, all, were to follow that day, but got pushed to November 20th, 2018, alongside the Nintendo Switch. The console ports were worked and released by Rooster Teeth. Around this time, the Bendy team was formed into Joey Juice Studios for all Bendy stuff, and Kindly Beast was for everything else. In December 2018, a mobile port was released in, in time for the holiday season, and that was a basic summary in the history of Bendy and the Ink Machine. I'm aware I missed Nightmare Run and Dark Revival, but please note, this is for Bendy in the Ink Machine, not Bendy in general. This video is going to be a long one, so in order to keep you guys entertained, I decided to include some gags and some skits in the middle of it, just to add some uh, some enjoyability to the to the video. So what I need you guys to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy. First thing you notice upon entering the game, you will notice the logo for Joey Drew Studios, which is pretty detailed and- Ah, oh, shit. That's the PC version. Hold on. I'm gonna fix that really quickly. Ah, oh, there we go. That's not as detailed. As you approach the ink machine room, you're required to lift the machine. You do is you put two dry cells into the power, pull the lever, and... Oh. It appears there's not as much steam that comes out compared to the Steam version. Well, I'm sure we could just go turn that up in the settings and there's no advanced settings. So apparently advanced settings is only on PC, which makes sense. The console port is made for a specific console and the goal is to not lag the damn thing. Imagine this, you bought a new game for your Nintendo Switch. You take it out of the box, put a cartridge in the slot, load up the game, and you're greeted with gameplay that runs at one fourth a quarters of speed. Oh, you know what? Good call in no advanced settings. Great call. Head down to the podium room and... I'm sorry, but is it just me or... Does everything that lights up look insanely brighter than usual? Let me just check the brightness settings. What the... Okay, look, the blinking sign around the corner. He looks bright. The wrench is even bright as hell. So does the bendy doll. Even that little bastard in the corner for auto-saving. That's better. As you can see, there's nothing else really to mention other than the other items being bestowed upon the raw of light. Let's pull the lever and bendy! Bendy appearing seemed pretty dang normal to me. Nothing to really note here. The ink flooding begins and still nothing bad. Okay, fall down, splash, descend the stairs, grab the axe, and pass the fuck out. We start off chapter two by waking up after passing out? What even caused us to pass out? We just saw three visions and fell down. Okay, well, we, we pick up the axe again, uh, continue our newly brought upon adventure. Nothing really feels out of place. Still not as graphical as the PC, but well, um, we keep walking and encounter Sammy Lawrence. Can you help me? Hello? 
After that, we need to bring power to the gate. Push some buttons and eat some soup. I'm hungry, damn it. We opened the gate with success and caught down some- Jesus Christ, that tape player is distracting in this dark, dark room. We are introduced to the first enemies and they go by the name of Searchers. We will just kill those pretty quickly and move on to the next section of the game. Some catchy music starts to play and my god, can I just dance real quickly? All right, let's move on to the next part. And oh my God, Bendy, are you, you okay, my dude? This cutout looks super coated in ink. You know, you know, I'm just gonna leave you, leave you be, and just give, move on to the next part. So we need to find a key for Wally's closet, and thanks to the Xbox special ability, we find the key with ease. Now a required tape player needs to be played, and it's a sequence puzzle. To activate the sequence puzzle, you need to go to the top and hit the projector. After you hit the projector, you need to walk down and hit the four sequence instruments. The four sequence instruments always vary, so it, it may be different from your game than it is to mine. As soon as we turn the wheel, we look at him stocking us up over there and, and kill his friends. We move downstairs and enter the new area that was in, added in with chapter four. We walk up to a bloated searcher, and my god, he has quite an awesome hat. However, as awesome as his hat is, He's really fucking annoying. Notice how, like, he's supposed to get under where the thing is supposed to squish him. Well, as I'm trying to get him to go there, he just seems to be playing back and forth and back and forth in these three directions, and it's really annoying. Eventually, he got over there, and... We head back with the wheel, turn it, pull a lever, and walk over to the exit. Oh, you thought you were gonna... You thought you were gonna get out of that easily? No, 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 no. It's chapter two out of five. You wake up to Sammy doing a long dialogue and you know, I just realized something. Every chapter has a long dialogue. After Sammy finishes and gets destroyed by the ink demon, Henry just easily escapes and fights some more searchers. Considering how easily Henry escaped, I wanna picture this. Uh, uh. We chop some boards down and we get our first chase sequence by Bendy. However, in this playthrough for some reason, Bendy just wanted to like stay at the beginning. I've never actually had this happen to me before and it's unfortunate that it had to happen during my review video, but I guess it's just kind of a little comical to say <laughs> he's stuck. We finish our quote unquote chase sequence with Bendy. Hey look, it's Boris. Let's start up this chapter, and let me just say, this chapter was super fun until the super fun got taken away. No offense to the devs, but I really enjoyed chapter 3 and how it was in the past. I mean, I only made 20 plus videos of that chapter alone. Let's start this off with feeding Boris and shoving the bone into his mouth. Oop. We go into the darkness, and it just seems you're forced to go slow in this section. Once again, the steam is non-existent in this section of the game. It seems pretty nice to run without the steam, so... Hey, could we get this option on the PC, please? M maybe for Dark Revival? Now, we give Boris the flashlight, and he opens up the next door for us. We are introduced to Heavenly Toys. Wow. I don't remember any of this. I honestly don't remember it being this dark. Holy crap! The ink doesn't look as fluid as it does on PC, but console restrictions are understandable. When we enter Alice Angel's room, and we enter the demon path. I must admit, the, the tiny pool of ink looks really, really nice. Boris! He ta we take the pipe and we move forward. No lie, that jump scare got me the first time ever, and I'm positive it's gotten all of you in the past you play if you've played it. But after the first time around, it's just predictable like everything else. Once Piper is eliminated from life, we make our way to the lift for the ultimate backtracking adventure. Because, well, it is. We walk up to the giant Alice Angel head and we enter Alice's lair. We meet Alice after walking through the wasteland of dead Boris's... What the 
fuck is plural for Boris? And now it's time for this chapter's monologue. Let's just... Considering the amount of times I've played this chapter, I almost know this monologue, like, by heart. So, before I go insane and start to recite her words, let's just get out of here. Our first backtrack will be on level K. We need the gears. We grab them from, from the wall, and we also get one from Piper. We take the gears back down to level 9 and give them to the needy angel. We head up to level 11. Poke, poke. Stab. So from what I remember, Bendy is supposed to be walking around, but he just doesn't seem to care at the moment. As we head back to the Needy Angel, we take a plunger. I feel like they had a team meeting and it was like... Okay guys, seriously. So we got an axe, a needle, a pipe, a fucking gun. What, 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 what else can we add? Oh shit, Mr. Bendy, I'm sorry sir, but... Someone clogged the toilet again. I'm sorry. Johnson, you're a genius. Way to go, Johnson. And that was an accurate representation on how the plunger got added. Don't ask Mike or Meatly. Don't. I was there. Trust me. Even if you don't believe me, let's just continue the game. We head up to level P and collect the valve cores. For... Alice, why do you need these again? Wait, what the fuck is the correlation with this? Gears? Wrench! Thick ink? Syringe! What do plungers and cores gotta do with each other? God, the gun versus the projector man makes more sense than this shit. <laughs> Anyways, Benny should be showing up anytime soon. Oh, there he is. But we really don't need the little miracle station. You just stay still and let this guy walk by... Bendy? Now, in the PC, ver in the PC port, yes, he does walk through the wall but there's an ink portal for the wall. But for here, he just kind of like no clipped into the wall. So he became one with, huh? We head back to Needy Angel and now she wants us to cut some cutouts. Hell yeah, let's do this. Our next task? Well, we gotta eliminate the Butcher Gang. Now let's just exploit the system and gun! Yep, I decided under the decree of me, I wanted a gun. We head down to level 14 and look for the inked up hearts. What? Now after we finish the ink heart maze and kill out the projectionist, We move back up to level 9 and give Anita Angel the hearts and move on to the end of the chapter. After we restart the game, the lift will begin to rise. Then it'll crash. Both Boris and Henry should have died in that crash. Boris gets kidnapped. And that means we move on to chapter 4. Alright, Joey. I'm here. Let's see if we can find what you wanted me to see. Chapter 4. This one is a super unique one, and let me just say I felt the most confused with it. The game is wrapping up, and I left this chapter solving, like, one thing, but started asking five more questions. We started by waking up after the lift crash, which we should have died from. We walk down the long hallway and grab a spare wheel from a, the broken pipe and put it on a vault door. I'm, you know, I'm... Pretty sure that's not how it works, game. Entering the vault, and my god, it is not pretty in here than on the PC. We start pushing in the books. One, two, let's trigger the jump scare with the book. It wasn't the cutscene of the loud noise, it was the way the scare went down. Ow! Oh. I think this is also the chapter that was heavily optimized for the console. And this is because that one guy who is a machine and smacks people with carts and stuff. Now, after finishing the book section, we go to... Hold on, can I see down there now? Alright, quick quick thought. 
wasn't this a cartoon studio? Not Journey to the Center of the Earth. Anyways, we gotta fix a gondola, make a gear, cross the ravine, get a bit of a scare. Make it across and open the door and ah, fuck! Not again, no, this needs to fucking stop. My eyes burn. What is it that keeps you going? What keeps me going is uploading this damn video to the internet. We proceed into the vent and have our first encounter with Bendy. Instead of killing us, he just kind of taunts us with the vent and walks away. Okay, bye. We come across some poor soul who keeps hitting his head against the wall. Should... Should we... Say something? Oh dear... As we get out of the vent and get access to Bendy Hell, we walk over to the haunted house and activate the mini carnival games. We play the ball toss game. No achievement when knocking them all down. And this is the part where TZ goes insane. So uh, if you don't like insane TZ, cover your ears until this until this part is done. This minigame is very much passable. You can clear this no problem and move on to the next part of the game. Say you are somebody who likes to be perfectionist at these games. Like myself. I wanted to get this achievement on my Xbox. But here is the console's problem. There is no sensitivity option on the console version. The controller sensitivity is absolute balls. You need to memorize where every single target pops up. On mouse, you can hit two targets and have so much time to spare. With console, good fucking luck. You need to be able to know where the exact spot is before it shows up. Fire, move, and get to the next spot. You need an actual plan going into this. The, this achievement also sucked on the PC if you didn't have a good PC. You couldn't move as fast with the mouse, and it just randomly lagged. Can you agree with me on this one? Just in case you are wondering, yes, yes, I have gotten this achievement. I will not re react this scene out. When I got the achievement for the first time, only 0.01% of people had this achievement. Fuck this achievement. Fuck the perfectionist in me. It's still less than 1%? Holy ch- Okay, next part. Distract the Butcher King. How do we do that? That. That is how. They have the attention span of a fly, if you haven't noticed. Eh, switch a couple of levers and you're good to go on the next part. Biggest park ever built. A centerfold. Attractions. The monologue of chapter 4 and the first boss battle ever. The boss killed many, many frames on so many computers, including mine. So when I heard they were making console ports, this battle was the first thing that popped in my mind and holy fucking shit. Rooster Teeth, you fucking did it. You made this work on my console. I assume the steam has something to do with uh, the lagging, so let's just remove the steam if that's possible. If you can't do that without breaking 11 other things, I understand completely. I'm up here now. All right, so we take the axe, chop the bolts, remove the arms, and watch him die from a distance. Now to the next section that was loved by many, many people for one scene. And here comes the best part to many, many... Ah! I want you dead if you're the one who keeps causing this bullshit. So I get the killing, but what is he even doing with these bodies? It's never fully explained. Not even in chapter five, it's explained why he's dragging the projector man's body. Eh, I guess, whatever. Now, I have a question. As you notice throughout the chapter, you notice that there's little miracle stations all over the place, but we never use them. There are like three to four different spots, but why? So now we get to the haunted house. And now, the ride truly begins, Henry. And Needy Angel does another monologue. And we get to the end. And we get to, uh, Boris? That's not how you left me. Boris, bud, you looked skinnier the last time I saw you. Wait a second. Did you get Burger King without me? <laughs> So Burger King Boris here is mad for some reason, so welcome to Boss Battle 2 of this chapter. This one is a bit more difficult, you have to run away from him charging at you, dodge his aerial attacks, then he will throw carts at you. Oh, and by the way, <coughs> those carts are one hit KOs. Oh my, this looks, this looks kind of bright for the voices of the damned. After defeating him, Needy Angel is Pissed. Why can't you ever just die? 
She is on her way to strangle us. Careful, Needy. This man can survive lift crashes from very far, far distances. Okay, whoever that was, too close for comfort. Oh, it's Alice, Angel, and Boris. Wait, you two just died. Ladies and gentlemen, may I bring to you the longest, unskippable thing this game has to offer. Five and a half minutes of talking in new days and bores being a dirty bitch to you in your life. Fuck you, new Boris. After they abandon you, you use the scene tool that Not So Needy Angel gave to you during that five and a half minute cutscene. You use it to find out how to leave, how to find a weapon. It's a pretty helpful tool. It's pretty fun as well. If you want my honesty though, I barely use the scene tool unless it says, hey, I exist on the wall. We take a boat and go into a dark tunnel. It honestly feels darker than the PC, actually. You encounter this giant hand in the Inky River, which... Honestly, how did this even come into play? We deal with this hand for about four to five minutes. It's basically a back and forth process of move, clear boat, move, clear boat, move, and so on and so forth. Okay, it's been 10 fucking minutes. Give me something exciting. That's excitement! But after that shock, I'm left with more confusion. How and why is Sammy here? Oh, he's dead again. Careful there, asshole Boris. This guy never dies. Oh. Well, now I got more questions. Why is asshole Boris being nice to me? Oh, I got another question. Why is Sammy still here? Okay, so we enter this battle, if you could say. Now, you can do one of two things. You can either recline and watch, sip on some lemonade, or get aggressive and fight alongside not so needy Angel and former asshole Boris. This battle lasts for quite a while and it's very enjoyable because it's full of action and I don't know, the music is really good. Another thing I forgot to mention throughout this entire thing, the music is incredible in this game. Whether it be certain boss fights or just the atmosphere alone, the music is incredible in this game. I feel like I'm going to be the most critical with things on this chapter, only because it's almost been 15 to 20 minutes and honestly I don't feel the NEVER MIND ADRENALINE ACTIVATED! After landing the ink and not dying again, he's pretty good at that I must admit, we head into what appears to be a waiting room? So I take it that in order to get here, you need to fall down the hole and there's no staircase in sight. So how would you get here in the first place? Joey, here for my appointment. Upon entering the room, we are given the instrumental to the chapter five song, Lonely Angel, which is performed by the voice actress of Alice and Allison in the game, Lauren Singer. I'd love to play the song, but I prefer not to be copyright claimed, so there will be a link in the description for the song if you've not heard it before. After we get the main door opened up, you will find tons, uh, and I mean tons, of different doors with different voice recordings of everyone in here. You will actually find pretty much all the voice recordings for the achievement. Now in here, the Butcher Gang will patrol the hallways. You have no means of defense against these guys. It's a stealth mission at this point. Now... What do you have to do? You have to go to the ink pump next to Joey's office. Now you could do one of two things at this point. You can play the legit way and travel back to the gent machine, or you can play the cheap way and just fast travel by death. It's to the point speedrunners use this to finish the game faster, I think. After collecting the first pipe, you're basically alerted of bendy now it's almost impossible to know where he is especially if it's your first time playing but if you really want to know where he is he's just on the balcony walking i don't know that was a balcony actually after collecting all three pipes and put and fixing it we head into the vault and find a box ah yes nothing but ink wow mom thank you so much for this birthday present i wonder what it could be mom Aside from the shitty birthday present, not so much asshole Boris and not as needy Angel have arrived. The Ink Demon has something that we need. 
Is it my birthday present? Because this used tissue is just not doing it for me. Three gears, a crowbar, some kind of counterbalance. So not as needy became somewhat needy, but not as much of an asshole Boris saves the day by punching the door. What is funny is that you have the freedom to move around during this cutscene, so you can just get in front of the door and make it seem like he's just punching the gut. Uh, uh, what the fuck, dude? Actually, no. No, I deserve that. I was looking at Not So Needy for quite a while. I forgot you two had something going on. Wait. Is Alice a dog fuck? Moving on. So I... I don't know if this is a bug or not, but when you walk up to the desk here, it plays the same dialogue from chapter one. Hey, here's my old desk. I wasted so much time in this chair. Henry, you didn't even know about this part of the studio. How can this be your desk? Quiet. Don't make any noise. But honestly, you can just be as loud as you want and just jump. Cause a ruckus. He ain't gonna kill you. Next. We finally see the ink machine. What do you mean that isn't the ink machine? It's right up there. Wow. It's pretty small from here. So not so needy angel, not as much of an asshole Boris can not join you. As they are made of ink, and tons of the ink makes them become one with the pond, river, lake, whatever it is. As ridiculous as that sounds, I'm no ink expert, so I'll just accept. As you walk in the ink towards the entrance of the door, you look to the right and you see a reference from... Bendy Nightmare Run, the mobile game that is super fun and you could play for free. You just run from people and you just jump and stuff. You can run very fast. Oh, they threw ads in there? But be warned, there are advertisements. No, I wasn't advertised to say this, I just said it. Enter inside the palace and see a throne. You walk up to it and play the tape. It's simply awe-inspiring what one can accomplish with their own hands. Screens will turn on showing fan art contest winners with their posters being animated by Time the Hobo. As Henry stops circling, he picks up. It's my birthday present. Oh, thank God. It's an already open package of Pokemon cards. Mom, I already have three of these. Well, and he doesn't appear to be happy that I got my present. He's so mad he transforms into a xenomorph and smacks you into a solid metallic wall. But the absolute mad lad just doesn't die. Henry has to pull four levels, cross the street several times, hug the walls, and a lot of times he never looks both ways before crossing. After that, Henry must turn a wheel, have the demon be extra stupid, and crash into glass pipes. After that, we just kind of walk back to the throne and put the end into the projector. But, what's gonna happen? Yeah, Bendy! Kind of you! Fucker didn't even get Thanos snapped. As Henry's vision comes back, we're in some home? After some walking around, it's made out to be Joey Drew's home. Well, where is he? Well, he's in the kitchen. Joey talks about how he failed and Henry did a good. He points at some door. You, a lovely family. Me, a crooked empire. Something I need to show you. Open up and... No! All right, ladies and gentlemen, kids of all ages. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's video. My first ever review video and the first time I've ever wrote a script for a video. I feel like I completed this on a high note. Bending the Ink Machine has been huge for me. It has led to me some great memories. Incredible friends, my girlfriend, a short partnership with the game developers of this game. I will forever be grateful and I don't regret the opportunities I was given. Despite the drama that happened from this game, I will always look at Bendy as something I enjoyed. My final review on today's game. It's good to play once for the story, but it really doesn't have a, uh, a huge amount of replayability. It, I rate this a one and done game. Hello everybody, post-editing TZ here. 
I just wanted to say that even though I said, yeah, it's a one and done situation, I would highly encourage you, if you haven't played the game in quite some time, pick it up again. You never know, it might be pretty good. That's all. I will say this about the console version. Even though the console version is insanely dumbed down, and for reasons so, to make sure it runs on the console, um, even though it's insanely dumbed down, I think it's a great opportunity for people who don't have powerful PCs to play the game. More people are bound to own a console rather than the play in a PC, like like mine or or famous YouTubers. You know, it's it's more than likely that you're gonna see see children owning an Xbox One or a PlayStation Four or even the Nintendo Switch. You'd see that over a overpowered PC. Ugh. With this video pretty much wrapping up, I guess it's safe to say this is gonna be my last video on bending an ink machine. I've done a questionable amount of videos on this game and this video was the perfect way to close the book of Benny the Ink Machine. We don't go yet, the video's not done! It's not done. Hold on. Before you go, I need to make an announcement about the future of content with Benny and the Ink Machine. So as you know, I made a post a little while, while back saying I'm, I'm done making Benny content until so and so happens. Well, I'm retracting my statement. Um, I'm making videos for Dark Revival. That means you're gonna be getting a gameplay video, a review of each chapter. Regardless, you're gonna be getting content for Bending the Dark Revival. Not as not as much as Bending the Ink Machine. We're not going down that route again, but we are gonna continue Bendy content on the channel. So I say thank again very much everybody for watching this video if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit the like button if you are not subscribed why not subscribe we do plenty of awesome fun content on this channel we do live streams as well hey streams are fun we also have a discord server i have not advertised this discord server below in the description is my discord server so if you want to join the server and come talk with me and a bunch of other people of the tzk universe by all means, you are more than welcome to join. I'm gonna start plugging the Discord server from now on. With that being said, for those people who are only in for the Bendy, me and Bendy will see you in the Dark Revival. Alright, get out. Alright, I'm taking a break!